Hi guys, welcome back to another exciting web design tutorial. In today's video, we'll be diving into the importance of web accessibility and exploring ways we can improve web design accessibility in Elementor. I'm David and on this channel, we cover all things WordPress and focus on Elementor, Bricks Builder, Generate Press, and any other builder we think that might be important to you. Our goal as web designers is to create websites that are accessible to all, regardless of their disabilities. So before we continue, let's talk about the different types of disabilities that can be relevant to web design. These disabilities can be grouped into five different categories. One is the visual, that's the eyes, the auditory, the ears, the motor with the hands, cognitive, that's the brain, and then seizure, which leads to the eyes and how we interact with blinking lights. When it comes to visual disability, it covers a wide spectrum starting with color blindness, because some people cannot see colors, they see things in black and white. Some people can see some variations of colors. So you might be creating a very beautiful website, but unfortunately, there is not enough contrast between the text and the background. You know, maybe the text is uh, some dark gray, and then the background is maybe black. Because it's dark gray on black, some people might see it as all black, because that's how their eyes can see co colors they don't see colors the same way you see colors some people also have like myopia that is short-sightedness some have long-sightedness so the way they see the font size of your text is different from the way you can see it they will see the text as being too small you might see it clearly so that's the second point is that you should try to use relative units for your text don't use the root font size as a pixel value try to use it as a relative unit so that gives the opportunity for the user to be able to zoom in on the text or zoom out to maybe set their root font size however they want because like for some of us we tend to use uh, bigger font sizes on our phones or our computers so that we can see things clearer but if you set the root font size as a pixel value then unfortunately that would not work for us. We would not be able to see your websites and that would turn off a lot of people from your websites. So try to make sure you're using relative units. Leave the root font size the way it is. Don't change it. Or if you want to change it, like how most people do, you can change it to like 62.5%. So you can use RAM sizes as one RAM equal to 10 pixels. But don't set it as an actual pixel value. That is not recommended at all. Some others have complete blindness which is what we'll be trying to focus on today how to improve websites for people who have total blindness imagine you have a website and the whole screen is blank is all black but there are content in there how do you navigate through that website the way you do that is through accurate labeling so that the screen reader can read those labels and tell us what exactly is written on the screen so imagine like you have a book but then you open into the book and there are just a bunch of texts. No distinction between what is the de dedication, what is the cover page, what is uh, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. There is no table of contents. How is somebody supposed to navigate through your website? It will be virtually impossible. But when you have proper structure on your website, when you have proper labeling, there is the cover page, you have the introduction, we have the preface you have the table of contents we have bibliography and any other thing that is important to the book then people can easily navigate through your book to get to exactly where they want to go to in record time they don't have to go page by page trying to skim through the book for hours and hours just trying to find one single line of text that they're looking for so that's the same way with uh, our websites as well we should treat our websites like those kinds of books the, the website should be properly structured we should have a header section the main content section you should have a footer section you should have some navigation links you should have uh, different uh, blocks of text into different sections so that people can easily navigate through those sections and we should also have the correct heading levels that is the biggest problem i see with most websites they don't have proper heading levels they start with an h1 somewhere then there's an h3 then there's an h5 you shouldn't use the heading levels as visually seen on the page because for you who have uh 2020 vision you can see everything but someone who is blind he relying on a, a screen reader the screen reader will read the headings in order so it will read 
the first heading then it will jump to another heading somewhere on the page that doesn't even relate to that heading and then the person will get confused of what exactly is going on in the page but going back to my first talk about structure most websites unfortunately which are built with elementor i realized that a lot of the websites don't have the proper structure we have what we call landmarks and websites the we have the header landmark which is referred to as the banner landmark then there is a bunch a navigation link for people to go quickly to where they want to go on your page is also referred to as the navigation landmark there is a search land landmark if you have a search bar on your page there's the main content that is grouped into a main landmark then the footer content is also called the content info landmark where you have all your legal things like your copyrights your privacy policy accessibility policy and any other policy you have those things are important because screen readers have three ways they navigate through your website they either use the the landmarks so they can just quickly go from the header to the main to the footer or to the navigation links using some shortcuts or they use the heading levels that's why you should have correct heading levels as well they also can use the links they can scroll through the various links on your website to get quickly to the link that you want to to get to so make sure you have those three things are in order the fourth thing is alt text for your images because as uh, someone who can see you don't really mind you can easily look at the picture and say oh this is the picture of a man holding his dog and he's happy but someone who is blind will just see that picture and not get the information from the picture and if you don't have an alt text on the picture what will be read to the user is the url for the picture instead of reading what the image is all about it will be reading https colon double slash then read the link which is not useful to any user but when you have the alt text then that is what will be read by the screen readers and it also be used for seo purposes now let's see some of these uh, landmarks and these heading levels in action so let's head over to a website that is popular for accessibility called webaim the link will be in the description below now you can see the website the structure now let's see visually how this website is structured into the various regions as you can see it has a banner landmark which like i said is refers to the heading this is the 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 header section we call the banner landmark then it has a navigation landmark that the navigation links to navigate through the site it has a search landmark for your search so that this when someone is using a screen reader he can quickly go to the search bar by just pressing a, a shortcut key then this is the main landmark which contains the entire important part of the website all the important information is contained within the main landmark within that they have another navigation landmark which is reserved for the table of contents and as such then you can see everything is contained within the main landmark all the important information once you got past the important information then for related articles which are related to the main content but are not part of the main content then we use what is referred to as the complementary landmark or the aside down below we have the content info landmark which refers to the footer that's the footer section now that we've seen the landmarks now let's see the heading levels see even they have an example of how heading levels should be properly structured now let's see it even in their website how it is structured in their web page so let's take off this and then put on the the heading levels so you can see first they have the H h2 which you can ignore but so once it starts from the h1 after that you can see the le levels are in order the main title of the page of the article is in the an h1 followed by an h2 for the table of contents this and this have the same levels like in your books as well when you are writing a book the book has preface it has the dedication acknowledgement it has the 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 table of contents all those heading levels are supposed to be equal importance so that's why you have this is the table of contents then the chapter one they all have the same level of importance in, in terms of heading levels then within those levels you can now have sub heading levels like now you can see under the topic called heading there is a subheading level called implementing headings so that's now going to an h3 within that we have different types of ways of implementing the heading levels so that's why you now use an h4 because those are 
levels under implementing headings. Once we're done with that, we have to go back to the proper heading level, which is the list, because a list is not part of the headings. So it's a different uh, heading level. So that's why you go back to the H2. Don't just mix and match heading levels, say, from H1 to H5. You can say, oh, yeah, I'm not doing it. But even some of the popular uh, content creators also make that same mistake. Like I can show you with this person's website. We all make the mistake, so it's not just you. But just try to ensure that you're using the proper heading levels. See, now he has an H1 here. Then from an H1 to an H2, which is correct. But then it goes from an H2 to an H5. Even though this is supposed to be related to directly related to the h2 but he used it as an h5 instead which is not that accurate then goes back to an h2 then an h6 so the heading levels are just all over the place then an h5 uh then an h2 again the person using the screen reader will get confused because he doesn't know where you're jumping from you're jumping from an h1 to an h5 and then an h2 then an h3 well we get lost but you should properly use the heading levels like this it should go in order from an h1 to an h2 uh, to an h3 and, and and so on and so forth then coming back to that structure as well that like we talked about in the beginning we should have that proper structure the header the main content the navigation search if possible footer and the sidebar if there is and you might be saying oh yeah since i'm using the theme builder i use the theme builder with the header with the main content with the footer so i should be covered but unfortunately with most page builders especially like elementor they leave it to your discretion to put those landmarks they don't do it for you let me show you an example of a website i created so this is a website i created uh, it's a demo website i used uh, design inspiration from the internet just to show you how it works now you can see this website you might say okay yes i use the theme builder to create the header section i created the main content section and I also created the footer section. So I should be technically covered, but unfortunately that's not the case. As we can see, when we try to do the same thing to check the landmarks, you see right now on the page, the only landmark that's there is the navigation landmark. Ignore the top one that's for the WordPress dashboard. It creates a landmark and it gives it a proper label, toolbar navigation landmark. But you can see on this website, the only thing there is the navigation landmark but you notice there is no header landmark there is no main content landmark and there is no footer landmark unfortunately because elementor leaves it up to your discretion to do those things uh you might say oh david it's, it's probably only you that didn't do it properly but now i'll just show you some other content creators their websites to see that we all have the same problem you see this one has the navigation landmark but the site logo is not within any landmark it is outside the landmark so a screen reader would not classify this as part of the content it's like having a book with some of the pages ripped out and placed by the side of the book although it's part of the book but it's not within the book at that point in time so some people might ignore it some people might be intelligent enough to find those pages on the book and put them back in you see there's no only a navigation landmark and a main landmark the header landmark is missing the footer landmark is also missing the same with this website i think this one might be better so this one has the proper banner landmark which is the header landmark it has a navigation landmark it also has the main landmark and the footer landmark which basically covers everything but the only problem is that the whole of the hero section is not within any landmark so it will be ignored by some screen readers they will skip this content so all this content will not show up within the landmark regions and uh, the same with the bottom area the featured tutorials this could probably have been in a complementary landmark which is their side or within the main content could be either way but unfortunately those two sections of this page will not be seen by some screen readers so those are the important things that we need to take note of and it's quite easy to fix these problems which is what i will be showing you in the next section but before that, we also see there's another error with this one. These two navigation landmarks have the same name, header menu, header menu. To some screen readers, they will get confused. Like they don't contain the same types of links, but they have the same name. It's like calling two people the president of the country. It's 
it gets confusing. Both of them cannot be president. One should be the president and the other should be like the vice president or whatever. But in this one, they both have the same name, so they could be regarded as the same thing, which could be very confusing to some screen readers. So we should make sure that when we are writing labels, let them have unique labels, not the same name. Unless they have the same links contained within them, then they can have the same label. But if they are different links, they should have different labels. So now let's head over back to the page we created. And let's see how we can improve this page to have all the landmarks that are required, the regions. So here we are on our WordPress dashboard. The two things I would like you to know is that I'm using Elementor Pro. So I'll be using the Elementor theme builder and I'm using the Hello theme. So everything is packaged from Elementor to make things simplified for us. If you're using some other themes, some of them may have already fixed the problems. So you can check it out to be sure that they haven't put the right tags. And if you're using another theme builder, they may have also fixed it. Like I tested out Crocoblock's Jet theme builder and I realized that they, by default, they put in the regions, they put in the header, the main and the footer. But Elementor leaves it up to you to do it yourself. And how can we do that? Let's head over back to the templates we created. So go over to template, theme builder. And we'll start with the, the header we created. I like to name things so to make them easy to find. So I, I named it site header. So on the site header, all we have to do is go over to the cog icon at the bottom. And when we click on it, it will take us to the header settings. Now in the header settings, go down to the HTML tag and set it to header. Then save it. That's all we need to do. Just change the HTML tag to header. Same thing. We'll go to the footer, which I'll just quickly navigate to using Control E to bring up the finder and then search for my footer, which I named it site footer to make it easy to find. So for the site footer, it's the exact same thing. You head down to the little cog icon at the bottom left of your screen. When you click on it, it is set to check it to the footer settings. All you have to do is the same thing. Click on the, the div and change it to footer. Then save it as usual. And that's done for the header and the footer. We can check it out. Let's refresh the page. As you can see now, it has the banner landmark, the navigation landmark, and now it contains the footer landmark called the content info landmark but the main content of the page is still not within any landmark we can fix that but let's go and edit this page with elementor let's first remove the overlay then we can edit the page with elementor so you think that it will be the same process of going back to the cog icon and clicking and then looking for the html tag but unfortunately under the post settings elementor does not provide you any way to change your HTML tag. You can only hide title, you can change the page layout and do other things, but there is no way to change the HTML tag for the main content area. So the way we can do that to overcome this problem is by using a single page template and then applying that page template to all our pages. So all we have to do now is head over to the theme builder again, but before we do that, ensure that the page layout is set to default, not to Elementor full width. Because if you use Elementor full width, then it will override whatever templates we're trying to put in. So let's head over to our theme builder. So here we are on our theme builder. So we'll go to single page. And then within the single page, we create a single page template. But I've already created one, which I'll just edit. But all you have to do is just click create a single page template. And then I'll just delete everything that's there already. What you do is click on the plus icon to create a new layout. You can use either one, doesn't matter. Then I'm just going to use a default single column layout. Change the, the content width to full width because we're not doing really doing anything with this. This is just going to be our wrapper for the main content. So within this, add in a page content post content widget make sure i can see some padding so let's take away the padding so go back to the container edit the container under advanced set the padding to zero 
to remove all the default padding and finally now we can go down to the little cog icon at the bottom left click on it you can see where it says html tag change the html tag to main and that's it you can save that add the condition set it to be all pages now that it's on all pages let's save and close now that's done we can go back to our page uh let's just exit preview it on the front end so let's refresh the page then now we can check the overlay again and see so now you can see it has the banner landmark which is the header the navigation landmark which is for the navigation links the main landmark and the footer landmark everything now is in order so the other things we have to also focus on is checking our heading levels that everything is correct that this is an h1 or whatever is the main heading our page should be the h1 the others should be like an h2 long paragraph text should be paragraphs not heading levels and another thing that we should also note that every heading should have content within it a heading should not just be left solitary just a heading and that's it it should have something under it it could be a button it could be some text but the heading heading should always have something under it you should not just use a block of paragraph text like this and then make that a heading and then nothing underneath it that is not right a heading level should have some form of content following that heading and that's basically it if you think there's any other thing that we need to add to this to improve please let us know if there's any question any comments anything you think that is wrong please do let me know in the comment section below and if this video has been helpful to you please consider liking the video sharing subscribing to the channel and i'll see you in the next one